So, uh, these uh, moments uh, we started already discussing with you during our practical class, yeah? But look, more properly and in more details, we will be discussing in practical class. But uh, today we will discuss the plan, the real plan of examination of patient, yeah? And it's very important to mark the sequences, this list of points uh, during examination of the patient. Look. And first point, visual examination. Visual examination of the patient is the simplest and most natural research method for a doctor of any speciality. And it's really not very hard, it's simple, yeah, to make a conclusion during the visual assessment of condition of the patient and any origin pathological disease. A feature of the inspection is that it makes it possible to obtain which non-isolated information related to a limited area of the body and complex information about the body uh, like a whole organism. Inspection allows you to make a general conclusion about the nature of the patient, his mood, general development, the shape and size of the body and uh, its individuals uh, and separated parts of the body, the color of the skin and visible mucosous membranes. And four points, the pathological signs noted by the doctor like during the first examination or like a first supervision of a great help in making the correct diagnosis. And such group uh, with, um, which we discussed already elements of the visual examined uh, understood me about uh, what I want to say during uh, this, uh, the main points. Examination of the patient is divided into general examination and local examination. General examination, which applies to the whole patient, is a whole and is performed at the beginning of the study, yeah? beginning of our examination. A local examination, special, which, read, uh, which refers to individual parts, organs, or systems. So general, like a whole part, like a whole organism, like a whole human body, and local refers to individual and separated parts of the whole organism of our patient. About general examination is an examination of the patient from the head to toe, and that's really true, regardless of the alleged localization of the disease process. Local examination examination of the area that corresponds to the localization of the disease process, for example, chest for localization of the pathological process into the lungs, into the heart, some changes of the shape of the chest, some changes, um, uh, changes half of the chest during respiratory movements and change the similar movements about abdomen for disease of the abdominal organs and so on, yeah? For example, projection kidney to the back part, it's also a local examination. We can define the local edema about the inflammation process in the kidney and so on. So a general, uh, a general um, examination generalization uh, process, yeah, the whole reaction to the pathological process and local examination separately, but for more significant uh, for organs which contain in this part, containing, yeah, for um, in this part of the uh, human body. There are some special rules during ex ex uh, examination of the patient, which we uh, have to discuss. So the lightning during our examination, which the inspection is carried out. The inspection is best carried out in diffuse daily light outside or with sufficiently strong diffused artificial light or from the soft light. It's very important to our point, the good lightness, uh, lightness in the room during our examination for checking anything. Examination technique, the patient is fully or partially uh, naked exempt by a doctor in direct inside lightning. You have to know about inspection plan. Yeah, look, 
at the past lecture, we discussed with you plan of the case history during your examination and remind about our practical class class you have to know special inspection um, special inspection plan the special sequences for good way inspection of the patient examination of the trunk and chest is carried out in the upright position of the patient more better way Inspection of the abdomen is carried out in the vertical and horizontal position of the patient. Surely, position of the patient during our examining depends from the condition of the patient. Yeah, imagine that our patient right now in not satisfactory, not in moderate, in severe position. Is it possible to ask a patient to stand in out during our examination of the chest? Surely not. Yeah, because uh, in the room and in department uh, of emergency, you have to examine the patient in this position where you find. Yeah. So, but the better examination uh, examination of the trunk and chest, we can continue in the horizontal position. Uh, examination of the abdominal part, I mean, examining the urine system, examination of the uh, size um, and form of uh, hepatic, we uh, have to continue like in vertical, like in horizontal position to consider this information. Five rules. Examination should be systematic and objective examination of the patient have to identify and we have to identify during our objective examination. Rules, lightning, more better, daily lightning, but if it's impossible at night time, yeah, with a, a sufficiently strong diffused artificial light or source of the light. You have to know about examination technique. The patient should be fully or patiently necked before start our exam for checking anything, for checking condition of the trunk, for checking condition of the feet, of the skin. You have to know about plan or sequences. Examination of the trunk the, uh, and the chest, more um, better way uh, to do in horizontal position in front of examination of the abdominal cavity in the horizontal and in the vertical position. And examination should be systematic and objective examination of the patient by identifying. What I want to say that uh, I told you examination should be systematic by plan and by system. After general examining, we start from examination of the respiratory system. After respiratory system, the place for examination of the cardiovascular system and only by these rules. So an objective examination of the patient, we have to identify firstly, the general condition of the patient. Yeah state of the consciousness and difference of consciousness, the position of the patient at right now, at time of our supervision, physique, high, physique, high, uh, high wave of the patient who measured body mass index, and some later I uh, show you how, to inspect the face and neck and remind our practical class in the previous week to conduct the study of the skin, visible mucose membrane to check its functional or pathological change during the skin examination, the level of the development of subcutaneous fat, lower of the lymph nodes, muscle system, bones, joints, and limbs. All this plan, we have to identify any change or prove the healthy condition of other system. Now, general condition. General condition may be satisfactory, moderate, and several. Yeah, sometimes we can assess with general condition like a relatively satisfactory. It's not exactly good condition, not satisfactory, but not a moderate. Yeah, so sometimes we can call the relatively satisfactory. For, the, for example, uh, during hospitalization of the patient for, diagn for diagnostic process, for treatment, you have to find something, it's impossible to present in the hospital in satisfactory condition. Yeah? So that's why we have to put in the medical history that condition of our patient uh, relatively satisfactory yeah? and to prove the statement of the patient in the hospital. Next, continue. Yeah? And look, 
first place, second place, third place, fourth place. It's all sequences of our examination. It's very important to identify all changes by this plane. Consciousness can be clear, yeah, or some confused or some disturbed consciousness. About um, degree and the deeper of the confused consciousness. Stupor, sopor, coma, yeah, and some psycho neurological changes like uh, excitement, delirium, and hallucination. It's also a state of uh, of consciousness. But we discussed with you three uh, type of confused consciousness: sopor, stupor, and coma. Next, the position of the patient can be active, passive, and false. Next point, the physique of the patient is divided into three constitutional types, nomosthenic, asthenic, and hypersthenic type. Uh, there are two types of constitution, right and wrong. So nomosthenic, asthenic, and hypersthenic type of constitution, uh, we can put in the right uh, constitution and a wrong develop, a right development way of the um, constitution of a person. When determining the type of patient's physique, yeah, the type of constitution of the patient, it's necessary to take into account his head. You can ask it. Uh, ask him uh, uh, about his height and weight, but better way to measure it right now during your supervision, it, it's, it's possible in um, this place. So, for what? We need it for evaluate to build a mass syntax, as well as to assess the type of chest, the localization of the ribs, and evaluate the rib angle. Yeah. So before um, the assessment and before the counting of the body mass index, we need the assessment the form and the type of the type of constitution of our patient. There are three types: nomasthenic, yeah, it's picture A, picture B, it's asthenic, and uh, picture C, it's hypersthenic type of person. Uh, there are many uh, special features uh, which are significant for this type of constitutional type, but the most uh, simple to detect during your supervision is assessment of the epigastrical angle or rib angle. And look, in person uh, with nomasthenic type um, of constitutional, epigastrical angle closer to a stretch, closer to 90 degrees, asthenic type person less than 90. Yeah, and you can uh, measure it uh, very simple way. You just put your pump on the arc of rib, yeah, and you can do it with um, um, your screen right now. That, yeah, and uh, in asthenic type, um, a person will have epigastrical angle less than 90, about hypersthenic type more than 90. Yeah, very simple to detect. Returning to the body mass index, yeah. After session in the constitutional type of our person, we continue and we can count body mass index. There is uh, the special uh, table for count body mass index, but, uh, but it's uh, not very uh, hard to um, count it in real time. You need to know height of the patient in meters, yeah? multiply by the same count, yeah, or uh, multiply in square, yeah, and divide it by the wave uh, of the patient in kilograms, yeah. And uh, for example, my wave is uh, 1.74 in meters, yeah, I need to multiply it in the same count and then divide it to my wave, and my wave uh, is uh, 62 or 63. This way we can count body mass index. Yeah, not very hard uh, formula to count uh, this number. After counting this number, we uh, have to assessment the different type uh, of development or in fact body mass index show us the development of the type of obesity, yeah? the degree of obesity. And in France situation, to cohexia, then we'll lose the wave. So look, body mass index, it's the first on the table category, body mass index, the count, the real number, and uh, then the sum primal, yeah, to change. So body mass index, very severely under wave, up to 15, severally under wave from 15 uh, till 16, some under wave, 16 till 18 and five, Normally wave 
from 80.5 till 25, the better body mass index in average between 80.5 till 25. Overwave. It's only overwave. It's not obesity by the last classification. Other with uh, body mass index from 25 to 30. Obesity third class from 31 to 35. Obesity second degree from 35 to 40. And obesity uh, the last degree or uh, third class or third degree more than 40. Yeah. So it's very important to determine uh, body mass index because increasing body mass index working like a house factor and working like a sign for us uh, for development of obesity or overweight, like a main house factor for developing coronary heart disease and heart failure. Next, we continue with you with visual assessment of the skin. Yeah? We start the assessment. The color of the skin can be pale pink, red, pale, ecteric, cyanotic, erity, crimson, dark brown, or bronze with the localization um, of this painting. Yeah? And we discussed in the practical class with you uh, how we can differentiate it normally paler skin and how we can uh, differentiate it pathological skin color and paler. Next, we need to assessment the pigmentation of the skin or such areas with vitiligo with depigmentation area indicating and its localization. We have to assessment with your tension and elasticity of the skin. It can be normal, increased and decreased. We uh, have to assessment the degree of humidity is normal, increased or decreased, dry skin or maybe flecking. We have to find and we have to assessment whether you present rashes or not, and which type of rashes, erythema, stain, roseoles, papule, pustules, blisters, scales. We have to assessment and present scars after any surgery intervention, and we have to put this information uh, in uh, the plan of our examination. Yeah. Next, scars and their mobility, size and localization. We have to find very close dense and localization of this prison and enlargement uh, vessels. We have to assessment mucous membrane like lips, nose, eyes, eyelids, mouth. We have to ask a patient to open his mouth and uh, assessment the condition of the soft pain, yeah, for detect maybe pallor, for detect maybe ectatic changing uh, like a first sign of developing jaundice. Also, we can assess when enduring um, chicken uh, the mucose membrane. Anantema rashes uh, on the mucose membranes, the scope and nature of this rash. Describe in detail the deposits on the tongues if they, uh, we can check in. Describe in detail the reeds on the tonsils and the tissue of the throat if you can check it. Prevalence, coloring, attitude towards subject tissue, the character of the surrounding mucose. It's more important for. Um, it's more important uh, during uh, uh, this time during uh, such epidemiological situation. Yeah, for detect such inflammation and some change into the fruit, like the window for infection. So look, uh, points types, condition, consciousness, position, constitution of the patient with determination of body mass index, visual assessment of the skin, visual assessment of the skin, yeah, with assessment of the condition of the mucose membrane to understand pathological and physiological condition. Next, assessment, uh, the level of the, of the development of the subcutaneous tissue, yeah. We did it already. We already count body mass index and we continue to, to develop in the other presence of the fat tissue. So the development of the subcutaneous fat layer or on the subcutaneous fat can be normal, mild and excessive. The thickness of the skin folds, we can check at the angle of the scapula. 
on the anterior abdominal wall, we uh, can see the largest deposits of that, maybe belly, maybe arms, maybe things. We can assess the general obesity and we can assess the cachexia like in front situation. Next assessment is swelling and their distribution varies. Limbs, face, eyelids, abdomen, lower back, general swelling or general edema, yeah, or total edema, and pasty skin. So, uh, in the point with assessment and the level of development of the subcutaneous tissue, also we have to pay our attention by the determination on the edema or swelling. Uh, there are different types of um, edema, yeah, and also in more details we discussed in the practical class. At this lecture, I want to give you only a plan of general examination of the patient. Next, assessment leaf nodes. We have to know about localization of uh, these nodes. Occipital, cervical, submandibular, supraclavicular, axillary, ulnar, inguinal, retroperitoneal. Why? Because, for example, inflammation process in the chest. Sometimes, yeah, we uh, will uh, check and we will find some inflammated, some enlargement, maybe some painless during palpation. Mm, closer, mm, uh, closer um, lymph nodes. Yeah, uh, about uh, the balance of the lymph and the water soluble, um, water soluble. Um, water soluble regulation. Next, the value in interest. Constancy of these nodes, density, soft, or homogeneous, or heterogeneous. There is special methodics for palpation of the lymph nodes for understand the consistency of the, these nodes. Also, it's also important in the moment of recognition of some disease. If the nodes are soldered with the surrounding tissue and to each other, and pain during palpation, our um, lymph nodes. So after point about assessment in subcutaneous tissue, we have to uh, put uh, uh, our attention to assessment of the lymph nodes during palpation. After lymph nodes, we continue with assessment of the muscle tissue and uh, for uh, development of the muscle lawyer. The degree of development of the muscles, it can be normal, mild, muscle atrophy, can be general or local, yeah? And look, remind about um, development of the muscle lawyer, difference in the normal constitution, difference and development of the muscle law in the nomasthenic and asthenic and in other with hypersthenic, yeah? We have to assessment the level of the development of the muscles. We have to assessment the tone or tonus of our muscles normal, some increased, and in this case, we will determine rigidity, rigidity of the muscle tissue, allow tone, the presence of contract tools after such trams, after such surgery intervention, mechanical excitability of the muscle and muscle roller, and muscle shortness at palpation, yeah, or muscle painless during palpation. So subcutaneous tissue with assessment of subcutaneous thread, continuously with assessment of the condition of the lymph nodes, and continuously with assessment of the condition of the muscle layer of the muscle tissue or muscle system. Next point: assessment condition of bones. Also, too important, like and for therapies, like and for uh, surgery, we have to assessment deformation. Periostitis, if you can check it, and curvatures. What we can find during our examination? We can find acromegaly, like excessive increase, uh, enlargement uh, in the size of the feet, in the fingers, jaws, or entire skeleton. We can find during our examination uh, drum your finger, yeah, or finger in the shape like a drumstick. 
it's a thickening of the peripheral or distal pharynx of the hands and feet, uh, which combined with which glass uh, changing of the nails, the extension of the nail bed and the form of the which glasses. We can determine it only. It's uh, um, uh, we don't need to special to ask a patient give us um, give me your hand. Yeah, it's possible to do it only by digitally. But it's not a mistake if you during the examination ask a patient please give me your hand to assess the condition, the temperature, the form, the shape of the nail. It's normally yeah. So and then you uh, take uh, the hand of the patient. You can assess anything yeah, and exactly you can find the form of the fingers like a drumsticks uh, and the shape of uh, a nails like a watch glasses. So continuously, tenderness to palpation and other fruit like a sternum ribs, long bones, vertebra, flat bones of the screw. So you have you have to palpate it all bones if you need it but if in fact you are um, already understood that the constitution of the patient is right yeah uh, no any problem with contractors no any problems with movements how you can assess me during your speaking with the patient uh, during activity move that is you can stop it and uh, you can uh, stop uh, before palpation of anybody but in fact any bones but in fact, you can do it. Yeah. So next point: assessment condition of joint. We have to assessment configuration of joints with normal swelling or deformation. How you can understand that configuration of swelling um, change? Yeah, or start to be changed. You need to consider the similar uh joint from uh, um, um from uh, uh two sides yeah you have to consider the right and left for example uh, um, knee joints yeah or you can consider it elbows from two sides and after that you can determine swelling increasing in volume maybe some change of color of the skin about the one of them so continuously uh to consider it uh, the two both sides also, flashing of the skin and local temperature rising the joint was increasing temperature above the inflammatory joint. Joint, it's a normal reaction. It's a normal reaction for inflammation. How you can check it? You can put your hand to the projection of the lesion joint and consider the temperature above uh, the similar joints from another side. The same methodic, yeah. All joints, uh, all um, form of joints, condition of the joints, you have to consider it with another side. Next, we can uh, assessment uh, the level of the movement, acti active movement and passive movement. Uh, loose and restricted painful movement or pain syndrome during uh, the movements by the joint or by the limb of the patient. What it is active and passive movements. Active, uh, you can ask a patient to make uh, some movements by any joints and ask him what he's feeling uh, during uh, this movement, during this activity. About passive, yeah, look, consider it. It's active. I do it by myself, yeah, movements in elbow. About passive movements, you ask the patient to give your hand the same with the leg and um, checking the condition of their uh, new joints yeah and do it by yourself you try to turn out turn up making rounding movements to check the pain syndrome and possibility to make a volume of the passive um, movements so passive and active movements in all types of joints pain during um, your examination, um, during your examination on other joints and crepitation, fluctuation, which indicate an inflammation process inside the joints. Yeah, crepitation. It's uh, some sounds during movements uh, in the joints when you can detect by uh, ear. Yeah, uh, you can uh, really hear it. And fluctuation, fluctuation. It's some. Uh, sounds also during movements, but uh, like uh, the movements of the water in the glass, yeah? 
cause inflammated uh, liquid that is present in the cavity of the joint. And during movements, you can detect some practically the movement of the water. Yeah, so some fluctuation. Assessment condition of bones and assessment condition of joints with all these points. Yeah, so this is plan for general inspection of the patient. Condition, consciousness, position, uh, constitutional type, elevated body mass index with interpretation of this body mass index and making conclusion about normal wave, under wave, over wave, about degree of obesity. Assessment of the skin and the assessment of the visible mucose membrane and what it is visible mucose membrane. Just uh, it's uh, clear and uh, clear and conductive during assessment condition of the eyeballs. Next, uh, visible mucose membrane. It's soft peel, and the last one it's area under the tongue of our patient. More simple to detect visible mucose membrane in these areas. Next, assessment on the level of development of subcutaneous tissue and subcutaneous fat. In fact. Next point, assessment of the lymph nodes, assessment of the muscle system and level of development of the muscle, assessment condition of bones, and assessment condition of joints. Yeah, it's plan of general inspection of the patient. After um, finishing general inspection, we start with you. Uh, and we continue uh, our examination from the more detailed inspection of the respiratory system. And inspection of the, the respiratory system, it's uh, not the mean that your patient uh, will have problem with the, the respiratory system, not, yeah? We have to do it in each patient, yeah? Need to uh, have, uh, have to uh, examine the respiratory system and then that it, uh, will be uh, determined that uh, we'll continue examination with examination of the chest. But before starting examination of the respiratory and cardiovascular system, like uh, um, like the most important part um, in view of examination, we have to discuss with you which method of examination in propedetics we will use with you yeah, in this course of propedetics and continue or during all your life. So, about palpation. First method of examination is palpation. Yeah? Palpation is a clinical research method using touch to study the physical property of the tissue and organs, the topographic relationships between all organs, their sensitivity during our palpation, and we need palpation to detect functional phenomena in the body. Yeah? The physical basic basis of palpation is really touch of body. Palpation, it's really touch of body. A sensation that occurs with pressure and movements of the palpating fingers, as well as a temperature sensation. When palpating an organ on formation or formation through an intermediate medium, a tactile sensation is obtained only from the density of the Capable body is greater than the density of the medium. Look and try to do it, yeah, like me, try to touch uh, any uh, region of your body, yeah, with some pressing to this region, yeah, very slightly, very gently uh, movements, and it will be palpation. There is different type of palpation, uh, and also there is a um, different types of palpation, which types? Superficial palpation and deep palpation. Palpation with both hands or bimanual palpation and jerky palpation. To determine the ballot of the dense bodies, liver, spleen, tumor in the abdominal cavity and fluid accumulates in the abdominal cavity. Superficial palpation, only superficial, yeah, like gently movement, slightly, more deeper palpation for um, um, we will be using it for palpation all, all 
all whole organs and abdominal cavity. And palpation with both hands, we can uh, call like a bimanual palpation and unimanual, uh, unimanual only palpation by one hand. Palpation by two hands, we can call bimanual, unimanual only by one hand. So, and look to this picture. In the picture one, palpation uh, of the large curvature of the stomach. Uh, today, we will not discuss the methodic of this palpation because we will discuss on the topic about digestive system. But look to the position of the hand of the doctor. Look to the position of the patient. Yeah, and remind. Uh, firstly, we discussed with you, with you that um, examination of uh, of abdominal cavity yeah we can check and we can continue so like in horizontal position and like in vertical position look in picture number one our um, patient is lying yeah in his bed we sitting around uh, with the patient and put our um, hand it will be unimanual palpation on the projection of the big curvature or, or large curvature of the stomach. Yeah, it will be bimanual, but not superficial. It will be deeper palpation. Look at the position at the picture two and to position of the hand. It will be the same unimanual um, palpation, but palpation of the circle. Because more detectable and more needed uh, palpation, palpation method for determination condition of the abdominal cavity. And look at the picture of the free um, uh, palpation of the ascending and descending core. Yeah? You have to assessment, not methodic. Right now, you have to know about position and the rules of the palpation like a method of examination uh, which we will use in during uh, our doctor's life. So, palpation, yeah, clinical research method using touching to study the tissue properties of the tissue and organs, yeah, and we can do it only by our hand. Practically all methods of diagnostics in propedectics of internal diseases, it's our uh, eyes for assessment by the usual way and for understanding and for checking in our hands for checking in other clinical symptoms and making palpation and the next um, type of um, um, examinations method like a percussion. Percussion, it's more interesting for my mind, uh, practical skills in the uh, uh, course of propedetic of internal disease. I'm sorry. So, percussion, what it is? Percussion, uh, it's a physician research method, also physician research method by our hand, which consists in taping on the surface on the body above the projection of the organ in order to make an idea of the physical state of this organ by the nature of the reflected sound. And look, imagine, yeah? Imagine the structure of the chest, the all normal anatomical layers, skin, subcutaneous tissue, muscles, connective tissue, bones, then sheet of pleura, yeah, if they speak uh, about the down part, then uh, place for air, yeah, for normally volume of the respiratory cycle, then place for lungs, then if um, we continue under the sternum, place for heart tissue, and many different lawyers and many um, different tissue will give us during our percussion, percussion different sounds during examination. Percussion as a research method was proposed in 1761 by a Denise physician, and it's important, yeah, by the method of percussion. Two types of it, uh, we can divide the two types of percussion direct and indirect, direct and indirect. And we will use it uh, with you all these types, uh, and we have to know the difference between it. With direct percussion, Tap the tips of the index or middle finger on the surface of the body with a small pillow. Yeah? Indirect percussion, 
consists in the fact that tapping is not carried out on the patient's body exactly, but in some object, uh, object attached to the taped area. This item is called a plissimeter, and we will use it more often our finger from another hand, and we will call that plissimeter. And the plissimeter may be a plate of a dense material or exactly the finger which applied to the surface of the body. Look, images are very uh, hard to show you by video, but look, direct percussion. It's a surface of the body of our patient, yeah? Can you see my video, yeah? Yes, yes ma'am. Yeah. So, direct percussion, yeah? It's all the finger, yeah? It's direct percussion, exactly by the distal phalanx, but not by the, uh, not by, um, by the nail, yeah, try to do it by your distal padding, by this uh, soft pad, and try to do it with me, yeah, it will be direct percussion. Indirect percussion, in case it between the body of patient and our finger will be uh, lo will be localized uh, such um, material, yeah, such uh, material or a finger. For example, for example, can you see? Can you see my hands? Yes, ma'am. Yes, yes ma'am. So, uh, this yes, face of my laptop, it's faces of the body of the patient, yeah? I put my hand to the body in any region which I'm interested in making, making tapping for this density structure. And in this case, it will be finger. Indirect, direct. Indirect, direct. That's all. All difference between indirect and direct percussion. You can tap on a plissimeter with a percussion hammer or the finger of the or for other hand. Thus, there are three methods of indirect percussion. A hammer with a plissimeter, with a finger on a plissimeter and finger on a finger. Uh, surely, in your clinical practice, you will be using uh, such a way like I showed you, yeah, like a finger uh, on a finger. So, a finger on the uh, one hand in the middle finger will be working like a plissimeter for you and helping for you uh, between, uh, uh, between uh, can be middle between the body of the patient and uh, your hand. So yeah, and it's uh, the scheme of summation, direct and indirect percussion. Yeah, is it clear? I think yeah, it's clear. Yes. Yeah. Okay, yeah, Kishan, thank you. So direct, exactly by the faces of the body of the patient, indirect percussion using the finger of the placebo. Yeah, from another hand. The hands can be changed and independent uh, from your constitutional type. Yeah. Next uh, material about percussion. Percussion sound has its own physical characteristic because, in fact, sounds its physical characteristic, which are determined by the nature of the underlying tissue and uh, will be differentiated from any when we continue our percussion. The density, elasticity of this um, tissue, the amount of air or gas in the composition or in cavity, the size and intensity of the cavities which contain in air, depending on this, the basic characteristics of percussion sound also can be changed. Yeah? And changing the percussion sound, uh, percussion sound above the one region in the pathological process and changing in the healthy, it's also exchanging, um, exchanging the process uh, in the 
in the percussion sound and information percussion sound and it's uh, it will be a clinical sign for us uh, changing health uh, anomaly sound above any region the intensity of percussion sound can be loud or clear yeah and quiet or do yeah uh, pr um, which depends on the amount of the air and the volume of dense tissue in the percussion zone so uh, this intensity of the percussion sounds uh, loud or a dual or quiet loud sound depends on the containing uh, of a mountain um, of the air above this region a loud or clear sound percussion occurs during percussion of the lungs due above the trachea, above the gas bubble region of the stomach and intestinal loops which contain air. Usually it's normal yeah, during percussion determine this type of sound um, above these regions. First of all, it's lung clear pulmonary percussion sound it's a gold standard uh, in um, the standard uh, of um, clear sounds lung clear sounds above the lungs trachea gas bubble region of the stomach and intestinal loops which all these areas or all these organs containing air, air, uh, air. About quiet type of sound during percussion of airless tissue, like a muscle, like a liver, like a spleen, and like a heart. Yeah. And after lecture, you can continue. Yeah. You can try to check maybe your relatives, maybe your brother or sister. Yeah. And you can check. You can put the hand above the lung, for example, in this region. Yeah. Some uh, um, some uh, down then uh, clavicula and can try to do these movements yeah to check louding and after that putting your hand to your patient to the projection of the liver and try to consider in uh, this type of uh, sound it will be different it's normal yeah so quite lung um, sound above the healthy lung and um, quite or do sound above the liver yeah or above the pancreas for example or above the muscle you can put your hand right now on your muscle and try to do percussion it will be different uh, um, a different in other sound next are uh, features the duration of percussion sound can be long and short which depends on the mass of the sounding body the vibration of small bodies the cetastral and the amount of the air in its composition the vibration of tissue which don't contain an air also the same more quickly a long sound like a fool for example pulmonary short empty for example femoral pulmonary clear pulmonary or clear lung sound and short or empty for example femoral above the femoral muscle really you can check it after our lecture about timber um, the percussion sound percussion sound can be tympanic or consonant and non-tympanic or inconstant a tympanic sound is detected other or above the cavities which contain an air which creates the condition for resonance of the cavity and the appearance of harmonic vibration resembles the sounds of the drum like an oral cavity like a trachea like a larynx like a stomach like an intestine tympanic sounds more not more more sig significant for whole organs which contain organs which contain in some area non tympanic sound occurs during percussion of the chest over the lung tissue and percussion of tissue what don't contain an air so loud or clear yeah and quiet loud or clear pulmonary sound like a gold standard a quiet or dull sound above the femoral muscles yeah uh, also about timber tympanic and non tympanic tympanic detectable above the whole organs which contain air and non-tympanic 
uh, above the August don't contain in, uh, the air at all. And look, yeah, mm, look, look, look uh, for the body of the patient, yeah, and we can find the place for different percussion sound. Look, uh, blue color, find the blue color, it will, it will be projection of the lungs, above the lungs, in normally in healthy person, we have to detect the pulmonary clear sound, pulmonary clear sound. All orange areas, it's place for in healthy condition, um, position of uh, the dual or quiet sound, yeah? And uh, tympanic sound, look, it's um, number of the one is above the gas bladder in the uh, stomach, yeah? Uh, the ideal of the tympanic sound. Also, uh, tympanic sound of boxes, how uh, boxes sound, we can determine if you will make a percussion of the post box, for example, which containing air, yeah? Whole organ like a box which containing air. And it will be ideal of the tympanic boxes sound. So continue about lung percussion. Lung percussion is the application of percussion strokes to the chest, causing the underlying organs to oscillate. Was the initial characteristic duration of the sound vibration, the frequency, amplitude, and timbre color depend on the density of the organs, the elasticity of the structure, and uh, the containing of uh, air uh, or not containing the air. We missed this information, yeah, about direct and indirect percussion because we discussed it some before before it. So, some characteristics, again, look to the picture, yeah, the methodic of direct in the upper part, A and B and C and D, methodic of indirect. And please, I ask you, try to do it. Your home task for all your curves will be to make these movements, direct and indirect. Try to do it every way, by the table, yeah, in the morning, in the evening, cause Percussion, it's uh, the most important practical skills in uh, our discipline. And unfortunately, they haven't ability to make it uh, in offline in normally classes. So please continuously to do it anywhere. Position of uh, your finger should be like this way, closer to each other. Why? I can explain it for you that when you start to make this percussion movements, yeah, it's impossible to surround in the sound between the fingers, yeah? You try to do it like this way, closer to each other. Your uh, hand uh, should be by parallel way or above the, uh, this uh, hand which contains the finger of precimeter and you contain it continuously the, such movements like a percussion movements, like, uh, like right way. Sometimes you can some slow me down the one finger from another in this position, yeah, and continuously to make a percussion. But more method to do it like this way to not surrounding the uh, sounds between in this space between the finger before detect more uh, better way. So a dual percussion sound, uh, a sound of small amplitude or small volume, duration and relatively high frequency. About characteristic of tympanic sound is loud, long and relative low frequency. Characteristic of clear pulmonary sound is loud, long lasting, and also relatively to low frequency. And in healthy person, a clear pulmonary sound is relieved, uh, revealed above the projection of the lung on the anterior and on the posterior uh, part of the chest, above the projection of the lung, which is characterized by a rich timber color, which is due to fluctuation in the elastic structure of the lung tissue. It's very timber, it's healthy pulmonary uh, percussion sound, yeah, describing healthy condition of the um, lung tissue, 
with uh, in person with emphysema with more erroneous uh, erroneous of the uh, alveoles in the structure of the lungs timbre of the pulmonary sound started to be decreased and the sound becomes like a boxing yeah like a boxing imagine the post box and imagine that we continue making percussion movements about the uh, post box approaching tympanic and its characteristic so the main um, percussion sound pulmonary clear sound femoral or dual sound yeah tympanic sound it's the main tympanic sound above the whole organs which contain in the air. And boxes sound more detectable in case of development emphysema of the lungs and the medium, the post box. Continue about different type of sounds. Femoral occurs during percussion of aerolous tissue like muscle, heart, liver, spleen, yeah, femoral or do. Also, uh, when we will uh, find the um, word of the relative dunus of the heart and above the heart, above the fraction of the heart, we can determine the do of femoral um, sound. But by its characteristic, it's a quite short, high, non tympanic sound. Pulmonary clear sound detected by uh, percussion of the lungs, loud, long, low, yeah, uh, healthy, uh, healthy timber. Non tympanic sound, tympanic occur with percussion of the trachea, gas uh, bubble of the stomach, and tympanic sound. This is a loud, long harmonic sound in intestinal loops containing air. And in the study of the lungs, we'll start it with you with comparative and topographic percussion. We will use in comparative and topographical percussion of the lungs. Yeah. Uh, so which types of percussion we discussed with you? Direct and indirect difference between using polysimeter or not. Yeah. In more clinical cases, you will use in your hand with a finger of polysimeter for helping you. Yeah. So direct and indirect. Yeah. And look to this picture. So, in more details, we will discuss in it uh, during examination the patient with respiratory uh, disease with a respiratory system. But uh, look to this picture in the down part uh, of the slate, yeah, and it's him, it points its place of comparative precaution of the lungs. What a difference in terms of comparative and topographic. It's clear, comparative, we need to compare the sound, the sound above the similar projection of the lungs on the anterior part and on the posterior part of the chest. Compare, yeah, in the base of comparative percussion of the heart is placed for comparing uh, the uh, sound's vibration, the sound's features. For what they needed, start from uh, the comparative percussion of the heart. So, uh, remind about unilateral and bilateral um, bilateral um, disease and pathology of the lungs yeah and imagine for example our patient and look at uh, this guy yeah maybe it's our patient look uh, our patient have problem from the right side uh, of a lung some problem uh, um, we don't know yet our patient tell us about some compliance maybe some pain maybe some unusual, maybe about cough, about temperature. During our comparative or comparing sound above the anterior projection, yeah, it will be like a screening to find the area where it will be the problem. Because the inflammation of the lung tissue will be changed, yeah, and the elimination of the inflammated fluid, transudation will be changed, percussion sound above the lesion site. So that's why we start from comparing of the condition of the lungs from the similar side, uh, from the anterior and posterior part of the chest. 
So, and there is present point of comparative percussion of the lungs. We start firstly above the uh, subclavicular area, and thirdly, we can start it from the right next to the left side. It's impossible to continuously all points from the one side and after that from the another side. You need to compare in percussion sound from the one and to the another side. And look after that, you ask a patient to, uh, to, to turn in by backside to you and continuously to compare it above the scapula, between the scapula. It's uh, not clear that uh, you have to put only twice between the scapulous areas in between the size of the back of our patient. You can do three times between the scapula and after that on the scapula. Yeah? Look, above the scapula right, left, after then, uh, clavicula uh, from the both side will be working like a placimeter. And if we will start uh, in direct um, percussion from the left side above the clavicula, yeah, we continuously in the region of clavicula without um, the finger of placimeter, cause the clavicula working like a placimeter. Yeah, so above the clavicula, clavicula, after that under clavicula like a second intercostal space, then we missed, uh, we'll miss um, uh, costa elements, a rib and continuously in the first, in the third intercostal space, yeah? After that, we stopped our comparative percussion from the left side because it will be placed for heart, yeah? It will be dumus of the heart and we continuously our comparative percussion only from the right side. After that, they ask a patient to turn his hand uh, on his uh, head and continue the comparative percussion from the uh, back side, from the, from the back side. Back side, yeah. And after they turn into the back and continuously uh, exactly on the posterior part of the patient, yeah, for comparing and for finding uh, the lesion site and the lesion region. Just a minute, I have some message there. Yeah, I see, guys. Yeah, I mark that you uh, was present in our lecture. So continue. Clear about why we start from the comparative percussion and only after that we'll continue the about topographical percussion. Comparative in the basis uh, comparing the condition of the percussion sound above the projection of the lungs, yeah, for find some lesion region. So continue. There are some rules about percussion yeah? before starting to make it and to continuously examine the patient with the percussion. We have to know some rules about this percussion. So the uh, placimeter of the finger of placimeter should be the index or middle finger of the left hand in case you are uh, uh, right hand, yeah. In other case, you can change it. It's uh, not important. Percussion strokes should be applied with the pulp of the terminal phalanx of the middle finger on the right hand in the region of the middle phalanx of the finger placimeter. The finger placimeter is applied to the patient body with the palm surface tightly without pressure. We don't need to press to the chest of the patient. Yeah, you only put with tightly and gently, comfortable, two days. To access of the terminal pharynx of the striking finger is perpendicular to the surface of the finger of placimeter, but position of the hand should be parallel by the uh, left hand, in my case, left hand, yeah? Perpendicular to the finger of, uh, of placimeter, the position of striking finger, but uh, parallel position uh, for the hand above the hand. The position should the hand above the, uh, above for the hand, but position of uh, your finger should be perpendicular to the finger placement. The percussion blue must be light and always of equal stretch. 
the percussion blow should be short and elastic and the room where percussion is performed so medical world yeah maybe some emergency room should be warm and quiet because it's impossible to ask a patient undress before starting to percussion uh, because starting our examination if the environment will be so cold yeah maybe it's the first and maybe it's the most important rule of percussion, the room where we will continue our examination should be warm and should be quiet, yeah? And look again to the position of the doctor's hands uh, during uh, such examination methods like a percussion. Direct percussion exactly by the striking finger to the body, not by a nail, try to do it by a distal phalanx, by the male part, for comfortable and for more stretch, yeah, like this way, and indirect percussion using uh, the another hand and using the finger of precimeter. The same methodic of striking of the finger, no, mm, no nails, only a uh, soft part. So continue. Continue. Next important method of examination of the patient in propedetics. We discussed with you palpation and the rules of palpation and which types, types of palpation we will using. We discussed with you percussion method. Next, we continuously about auscultation. Auscultation is a physician research method, again, physician research method which consists in listening and to hear to sound phenomena that occur in the body like a result of fluctuation of one or another of uh, elements of the uh, body of the patient in order to judge the physical state of the organs by the nature of the sound. Sounds determined during auscultation are much weaker than during percussion and uh, therefore they can be carved either by directly applying by the ear to the patient body, yeah, like a direct auscultation, but it was in the past, yeah, uh, or by means of sound conducting devices like a stethoscopes or stethophonendoscopes using special membranes. And I think that you already had the special devices like a stethoscope or stethophonendoscopes. Uh, what difference between stethoscopes if an endoscopes? Some difference in the structure of the membranes. So auscultation method, direct auscultation method. With this method, listening is done directly by the ear. Yeah, surely it's possible. Sometimes, uh, gynecolo gy specialists by gynecolo gynecologist, yeah, using this method for detecting the heartbeats of the newborns. Indirect or instrumental auscultation, which uh, with the method is using uh, special devices. What about direct auscultation has the following advantages? A large surface of uh, perception, the natural uh, uh, nature of the sounds, it will be really sound without any device. The ability to listen to weak and high sounds, high speed of research ring, and a clear idea of the general changes in the organs under uh, investigation. Yeah, It's some advantages of the direct transportation without using any devices. But practically, all during all your clinical practice, you will use an indirect type of auscultation and will use your special medical device. Uh, and some advantages about instrumental auscultation. First of all, it's localization of the sound. You can put your device and head of your stethoscope, anybody. Uh, listening uh, anywhere in the body using flexible phonendoscopes uh, at any position of the patient. You can continuously in horizontal and vertical position during sitting, during standing. The hygiene of the method, yeah, and it's also important for us, hygiene of this method. And a dilated examination of a specific area of the body. Maybe it's impossible to make a direct um, auscultation above, uh, above uh, the um, artery, uh, artery nephritica. Yeah? It's also be detectable only using by special devices. 
and also there are basic rules of auscultation, um, like basic rules or rules of percussion. The room should be warm and quiet, should be warm for unrest our patient and should be quiet for more detectable really sounds. During auscultation, the patient sits on the chair or in bed for more comfortable position of the patient. Uh, our devices need to be pressed very tightly to the skin, no mm, very high level of press. Our auscultation is carried out according to a certain plan, and there is special plan, there is special points and special sequences in the auscultation of the heart, during the auscultation of the lungs. During the study, in accordance with the need, the doctor can change the position of the patient if you need it. For example, in case of a destruction of uh, uh, the valves, uh, of the heart, yeah, you can ask a patient to turn to the back to more detectable in this position and try to find changes during auscultation in the uh, first point of auscultation of the heart. And the doctor should always use the stethoscopes of an endoscope that he is used to. Yeah, you uh, continuously your determination and your examination the patient with you usually with your normally devices. Yeah, for considering the same information. Yeah, for comparing the same information from any types of, from one type of device. So I missed this information about points of auscultation of the lungs, because we will discuss it more properly in our practical class. Yeah, and uh, and 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 and. Uh, in the end of our lecture, I want to give you a general concept of instrumental and laboratory research methods. Yeah, we cannot discuss all research methods in the uh, second lecture. Yeah, we will in more details we will discuss all research methods during examination um, separately systems. But uh, the key to success in treatment is a timely and correctly diagnosed, which we can put our patient. About clinical laboratory diagnostics is the field of medical science that deals with festival. The study of the lower of the changes in the composition and property of the biological fluids and cellular elements of tissue in the process of trans, uh, transition of uh, the physiological state of the body to the pathological and uh, vice versa. The establishment of laboratory criteria for normal pathology. The development of the new technology for clinical and laboratory research that increase the effects of the diagnosis process of the disease, assessing the prognosis and the severity of its cures. Clinical laboratory diagnostics includes, first of all, general clinical analysis, general um, clinical analysis of urine, of the blood, of any fluid, biochemical analysis, hematological analysis, cytological analysis, microbiological analysis, and immunological and some other studies. The main general biochemical, hematological, cytological, microbiological, and immunological. All these states we uh, need to use in the diagnostic process for understanding the pathogenesis, etiologies, and to make a plan of treatment of the patient. The object of the study can be blood or plasma, serum, blood cells, cerebrospinal fluid, intraticular fluid or fluid inside the cavity of the joints, content of the gastrointestinal tract fluid, contents of the serous cavities, excretion of the human body, urine, thickest saliva, sperm, tissue of the parenchymal organs after taking biopsy materials, and some skin derivatives. All, um, all uh, tissue which we can put uh, from our patient and all liquid, all substance we can put to analysis in laboratory. All, yeah? all fluid from the toracal cavity, all fluid from the abdominal cavity, if you put it out from the patient, you need to analyze it. 
And the last moment, it's about instrumental diagnostic methods in the clinic of internal diseases. Surely, after our examination, general examination, collect information uh, during examination by the system separately, yeah? After finishing our examination by, by our hand, by our heel, we continue to the next level, it's laboratory diagnostics. And the next level, it's instrumental diagnosis, use special devices. First of all, it's place for X-ray examination, which includes different methods, such as, first of all, X-ray, computer tomography, bronchography, uh, magnetic resonance uh, imaging, or MRI, uh, MRI, yeah. Next, basic instrumental research methods, magnetic resonance, endoscopic research methods with, um, with taken biopsy materials, ultrasound study, uh, organs and tissue biopsy, radioisotope research methods with colorization, and electro uh, electrophysiological research methods, including ECG, which you start uh, to study with uh, Dr. Dadlov. So that's all for today. All is clear for today? Yes, ma'am. Yes, ma'am. Yes, ma okay, thank you for your attention. Have a good evening. See you next week.